If you're not happy with the new Google Pixel 6a and I can completely understand that emotion, I might have an alternative for you. I'm talking about this, the new Motorola H30 Fusion. Hi, if you don't know me yet, I'm Ashad. You're watching Track and Tech English. Let's discuss what's new in this year's Fusion by Motorola. First things first, let me set some context. Last year's Motorola H20 Fusion was fighting in a completely different category and that is under rupees 25,000. This year, the H30 Fusion, wow, that had to happen. This year, the H30 Fusion has been upgraded. And the Fusion story is completely different this year, whether it's the design, display, battery, or the performance. Now, if you've come this far, don't forget to hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever we put out an awesome new tech video. Starting with the fusion in the design of this product. Just look at this color. Doesn't this look like a calcium sandos tablet? Of course, this is a very bold color and not everybody might like it, but you do have other color options. So that's a good thing. The phone is very slim at 7.7 millimeters thickness and it has this very nicely designed camera module too. I really like the in-hand feel of the Motorola H30 Fusion and I do also like the fact that it has a flat top and a flat bottom which means that you can place it on a flat surface like this table that I'm standing in front of and it will stand without any support. I'm sure my videography team shooting this video right now must be really happy about the fact that P-rolls are going to be slightly easier to take. Now as far as the materials used in the construction is concerned, you've got Gorilla Glass 5 on the front, you've got Gorilla Glass 5 on the back and you've got a very sturdy aluminium frame as well. Design wise, I think that the Motorola H30 Fusion is definitely a looker. I dig it, but that's my perspective and design is subjective. Hey, <laughs> that rhymed. So whatever your opinion is, do let me know in the comment section below. Now I noticed one thing about the industrial design of the Motorola H30 Fusion. There's this very prominent Dolby Atmos logo on the top, which means of course, Motorola is very proud of that association. So you've got a stereo speaker setup with a grill at the bottom and an earpiece that works as the left channel. But you know what? In my testing, I noticed that there was a very heavy left-right channel imbalance. Take a listen for yourself. Moving on from the design to the display fusion. Even the display now is curved, which is a rarity in this price range. And that makes the phone feel a lot premium too. Quickly addressing that one major concern that we have with curved display, and that is ghost touches. Surprisingly, in my you know time of two, three days with the Motorola H30 Fusion, I didn't face any ghost touch, which is very, very good. Now talking about the specs of the display, this is a 6.55 inch POLED panel with 1 billion colors and HDR10 plus support out of the box too. And it it can reach a peak brightness of 1100 nits. You also get an in-display fingerprint scanner, which is kind of placed low, but it's very fast to unlock. And it doesn't have that pixel problem where it unlocks with other person's fingers. Well, I didn't have that pixel problem either, but a lot of other people did. But I did notice one thing in my time with the phone is that the auto brightness algorithm is extremely aggressive and it would keep dimming the phone at any chance it got. But that's also because Motorola has actually tuned for power efficiency instead of performance, which brings me to the performance and battery fusion of the Motorola H30 Fusion. So fitted inside this phone is a Snapdragon 888 Plus. Of all the SoCs that have come out of Samsung's foundry and made by Qualcomm under the Snapdragon name, the Snapdragon 888 has to be one of the most ill-performing ones, especially when it comes to thermal efficiency. And Motorola knows this all too well and therefore has tuned it in a way where you can eke out the best battery life out of it. And you can see that from the Antutu score that we got, which is definitely much lower than what Snapdragon 888 Plus is actually capable of. But you know what? This means that you can expect great battery life from the Motorola H30 Fusion because after it got adjusted to my usage patterns, the adaptive battery started, you know, kicking in properly. I got over six hours and 30 minutes of screen on time from the 4,400 mAh battery inside this phone. And that's fantastic because for me, great battery life is of paramount importance. And the kind of performance that's available on the Motorola H30 Fusion is good enough for my Apex Legends sessions. By the way, the Motorola H30 Fusion also supports 68 watt fast charging and it supports USB PD standards as well, which means that it worked with my stuff cool charger too. And I noticed that you can charge it from 0 to 100 in about 40 minutes, which is very good. 
Now let's talk about the software fusion. And for that, I need to set some context because last year's Motorola H20 fusion is running not Android 13, not Android 12, but Android 11. Yes, that phone has still not been upgraded. And I think a lot of the blame goes to the fact that it's got a MediaTek Dimensity 800U chip inside. Android upgrades on MediaTek chips have an infamous uh, history of sometimes being slow and clunky. And that seems to have affected the Motorola H20 Fusion. Which is why I feel that Motorola has decided to go with the Snapdragon chip this time and that's the SD888+. Now the phone is running on Android 12 with the July security patch and Motorola promises 2 plus 3 years of software upgrades. I really like the tweaks that Motorola makes with MyUX on top of you know vanilla Android. It has the right kind of personalizations with Moto Actions and I do like that personalized page as well the way it is laid out and the kind of you know things that you can do with it with respect to changing the font with respect to changing the color based on the wallpaper theme all of that is very nicely done plus this game time feature which pops up whenever you're playing a game on the phone has this very nice visual indicator in the form of edge lighting to give you an idea of you know where the sound is coming from in fact this proper edge lighting animation for calls for messages and for when the battery is charging i think that the edge lighting thing is really nicely done on the motorola h30 fusion now time to finally talk about motorola's achilles heel and that is camera fusion. Now the cameras on the rear of the Motorola H30 Fusion are a 15 megapixel primary camera, a 13 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 MP depth camera. On the front, you get a 32 megapixel selfie camera. Now I've tried the cameras out only for a bit, but what I noticed is that you do get very good color reproduction and you also get decent low light performance too. And thanks to the fact that you have a Snapdragon 888 Plus chip inside, you can shoot 4K videos using the front camera and 8K videos using the rear camera. But you know, I both know this I'm definitely going to do a camera comparison the entire package makes me feel if this is a better pixel for most Indians and just looking at the industrial design and the display of the Motorola H30 Fusion I can see how it is better than the pixel 6a I'm just very happy my first impressions of using the Motorola H30 Fusion are very very good it's a clean stock premium Android experience that just works very very well also kudos to Motorola for going towards an eco-friendly packaging I really like the kind of packaging that Motorola Motorola has for the phones this time around. All right, that's it from me. Stay tuned for more. Let me know what you guys think of this new Motorola H30 Fusion in the comment section below. Until next time, this is Eshad signing off. Keep tracking and stay safe.